تبسم 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 وخلي الهموم وخلي الغموم وخلي الضجاج ولا تبتئس من صروف الزمان ولا تشتكي من قعون البشر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمع مبارك to the congregation and to all your loved ones and also to the viewers of ITV <clears throat> on behalf of the imams Musallis and the officials of Masjid Abu Bakr Siddiq, Erasmia, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to sincerely welcome Dr. Sayyid Muhammad Shoaib. Dr. Muhammad Shoaib will be addressing you this afternoon, and the topic of his discussion will be Quran and science. I'd like to just give you a, a background of Dr. Shway. I think once he stands there, you, you might recognize his face. I certainly have. If you have Peace TV in your homes, he's been a regular feature on Peace TV with Dr. Zakir Naik. He is, of course, a medical practitioner by profession. However, I think more importantly, he is a da'i. He's conducted numerous talks throughout the world in the Indian subcontinent. This is his second visit, I think, to South Africa. And his specific purpose of this particular visit is to conduct Dawa causes. Uh, so if there is anyone that's interested, we will be hosting him, inshallah, starting tomorrow at the Abu Bakr Siddiq Auditorium upstairs at 9 a.m., running up to 1 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, where Dr. Shoei will be conducting a course for Dais. It's very, very important that we involve ourselves in this particular aspect of our deen so that we can spread the good news to those that haven't received it as yet. Once again, uh, Dr. Shweb has been involved in Dawa or calling people to Islam for the past 25 years. He's also debated many, many issues of deed and comparative religion with peoples of other faith. So he is a man with experience, of course. And I would like to now take this opportunity to call Dr. Shweb to address you this afternoon. Jazakallah. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nafta'inuhu wa nafta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi man shururi anfufina wa min fayyati a'malina man yadihillahu fala mudillala wa man yudlilhu fala hadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rafuluhu. أما بعد فعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أولم يرى الذين كفروا أن السماوات والأرض كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا يؤمنون رب شرح لي فدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, may I greet you all with Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah. The topic announced Quran and Fines. Alhamdulillah, Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu through Angel Gabriel. And Alhamdulillah, it is a miracle of miracles. Previously, prophets came with miracles and books separately. But Prophet Muhammad left this miracle 
book and a miracle at the same time. Alhamdulillah, it was a miracle at the time when it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is a miracle today and it will remain forever, inshallah. At the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was not the age of science and technology. The age was of poetry and literature. Quran challenges them in their field and it mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 23 and 24. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ أَبْدِنَا فَأْتُ بِسُورَةٍ مِّمْ مِسْلِهِ وَدْعُوْ شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ As to what, if you have doubt, as to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, then produce a surah like unto it, and call forth for your witnesses and help us all besides Allah if your doubts are truthful, if your doubts are true. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges them that if you doubt that this book is not from God, you are well versed in your literature, you are at the highest peak, and you, you are proud to call yourself Arab because you can express yourself, and you call the non-Arabs as Ajam because they cannot express themselves, so Allah SWT challenges them, then produce a surah like unto it, if you, doubt, if you doubt that this is not from God. What does it mean? It means that there are 114 surahs in the glorious Quran. Anyone who wants to attempt a challenge, he will not take the example of Suratul Baqarah, which is longest surah. He will take smaller surah, like Suratul Ikhlas, Suratul Nasr, Suratul Asr, smaller surahs. For example, he takes a Suratul Ikhlas, 112th chapter of the Glorious Quran, which says, Qul hu Allahu Ahad, Allah is one and only. Allahu Samad, Allah the eternal and absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, he begets nor has he begotten. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كَفُونَ أَحَدْ And there is none like unto him. Now when he reads this in Arabic, he understands because the challenge is in Arabic to produce a surah like the Quran in Arabic. So being his language Arabic, he understands what the message is, Surah Al-Ikhlas, in the Surah Al-Ikhlas. He grasps the message. What he is required to, that he must reproduce the same message in his own Arabic language. And after doing that, just match what you have written and with the Surah Al-Ikhlas and you will find difference of chalk and cheese, poles apart. Language is such that if 100 people are here and they are all understand English language and if you pick up two person from here and ask them to speak, you can very well differentiate his English is different from his English. His English is superior, his English is inferior. Very well, it is very easy. Language is such that you can very well verify. On the face of it, it seems so easy, so simple. But when you make an attempt, it is most difficult, it is impossible. It is just impossible. People have tried in the past, at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they failed miserably. And today also they are trying and they are failing miserably. Today also they make an attempt and they fail miserably, Alhamdulillah. But this is not the surah, this is not the ayah, which is a challenge to them. The very next verse also speaks about a challenge. فَإِلَّمْ تَفَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفَلُوا but if you cannot, of a surety, you will never, never be able to do that. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَكُودُ هَنَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Then fear the fire of youth will be men and stones prepared for those who reject faith. Now who can make this statement? Who can make this statement? فَإِلَّمْ تَفَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفَلُوا That if you cannot, and you will never, never be able to do that. Who can make this statement? How can a person, a human being can know of another person, other community, or the whole world, what will happen after 10 years, what will happen after 20 years, what will happen after 30 years? He cannot imagine what will happen after 5 minutes also. How can he be sure of forever? But Allah's mother says, فَإِلَّمْ تَفَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفَلُوا And if you cannot, of a surety, you will never, never be able to do that. Then fear the fire of whose will will be men and stones prepared for those who reject faith. Now in this phrase also there is a miracle. Miracle in a sense that people understand that you as extinguish fire we use mud and stones. Where stones can be a fuel. How can fuel be, how can stones can be used as fuel? Now today in this age of science and technology, we can very well understand that even stones can be used as fuel. For example, calcium carbonate, marble stone, when it is heated and disintegrated into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and later calcium and oxide and when it again reacts with other elements, it produces intense heat 
equal to 450 and plus Celsius. So now you understand very well from science and technology that stones can be used as fuel also. How is it possible to utter these words 1400 years ago if it is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from a human being? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was an ummi prophet, unlettered prophet. He could not read and write. He had not gone to any university, no school, nothing. How can he make such a statement? Just impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 30. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَسَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْنَ حَيْ In field of astronomy, the scientists, they have confirmed and discovered with proof that the universe initially was a primary nebula, big mass. And then there was a big bang. Big mass, primary nebula, the whole universe was one unit, Big, uh, one big mass and then there was a big bang and this is known as again the separation and then the galaxies the stars earth moon planets all this later on came into existence but in short it was first initially one big mass primary nebula Quran mentions in Surah al as they quoted chapter 21 verse number 30, Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation before we clothe them asunder. Before we clothe them asunder. How is it possible in a nutshell which is discovered in our age in the 1920th century confirmed with Stephen Hawking that the biggest discovery of the century could be mentioned 1400 years ago by a Mumi prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If it is not from God, it is not possible from a human being, it has to be from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The scientists also say that the, after the Big Bang, the, and before becoming the galaxies and stars, organized bodies, Big Bang take place, and before it came to be galaxies and stars, it, before that, it was in a state of smoke. It was in a state of smoke, gaseous matter. Quran mentions this fact in Furutul Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 11. Summa stawa ila samai wa hiya dukhan. That Allah SWT comprehended in his design, he turned towards the heavens when it was dukhan. Wa hiya dukhan. Dukhan in Arabic means smoke. Again, how is it possible? Nobody was present at that time when the Big Bang was taking place. No human being, no creature, no living being, no scientist, no philosopher. Nobody was there when the Big Bang was taking place. When the smoke, it was in the state of smoke, nobody was present. Only Allah SWT can inform us that it was in smoke. Today, scientists discover that initially when the Big Bang took place, later on, before coming, becoming into a galaxies and stars, it was in a state of smoke. Just impossible to say this fact 1400 years ago by a human being. It has to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the field of the shape of the earth, the shape of the earth people understood at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it was flat. People worried and they feared to run too far thinking that they will fall off the edge. They feared that. It was only in 1577 Francis Drake, he sailed round the earth, took a one round, and he then discovered and proved to the people that the earth is not flat, it is globe, it is round. Quran uses words for the alternation of the day into night and the night into day. In Furutul Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 29. Alam tara anna Allah. Do, not, do they not see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alam tara anna Allah, yuliju layla fi nahare, wa yuliju nahara fi layl. Don't you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He merges the night into the day and merges the day into night. The words used are yuliju, meaning gradual, merging, slowly. In Furutu Zumar, chapter 39, verse number 5, Khalaqa samawati wal ard. Allah SWT, He has created the heavens and the earth. Yukawiru layla ala nahare, wa yukawiru nahara ala layl. He coils up, He wraps up the night over day, and He coils up, wraps up the day over night. The word used are yukawiru, meaning gradual. 
wrapping, like how we wrap the turban, and this is how the slowly, gradually, the uh, change of night into day and day, of night into day, night, day into night is changed. It is a gradual process. If the earth was flat, it would be sudden, not a gradual one. So the author knows that the the author knows that the earth is not flat, it is globe, it is spherical. Here, let me tell you that Bible also speaks about the shape of the earth. Shape of the earth. But in Luke chapter 4, verse number 8, in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1, and Mark chapter 1, verse number 13, it says that Jesus was tempted by Satan, and Satan took him to the wilderness for 40 days, and he took him on the top of the mountain. From there, at the top of the mountain, he made to see every kingdom of the earth down. It is only possible to see all the kingdom of the earth from the top if the earth is flat. If it is globe, it is not possible. The other opposite side of the globe you cannot see. So the idea is that the earth is flat. The light of the moon and the light of the sun is different. The sun burns. There is a fuel internal combustion taking place in the sun. The hydrogen gas turn, converts into helium, and there's the intense heat, light is produced. So the sun is producing light. Whereas moon is an inert body, it doesn't produce the light. There is no internal combustion taking place in the moon. It reflects the light. Light falls on the moon and it reflects to us. It reflects the light. Quran mentions and differentiates between the light of the moon and light of the sun. The light of the moon, which is mentioned in Quran, described as Siraj Wahaj Diya. Siraj, torch, Wahaj, lamp, Diya, shining glory. All indicating that the, it is producing light. Whereas the moon, the light is described as Noor and Munir. Never you will find for the sun, moon, Noor and Munir is used. Never you will find for the moon, Kamar, Siraj, Wahaj, or Diya is used. Just ponder over this verse in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 61. Tabaraka ladhi ja'ala fi samaya burujam wa ja'ala fiha sirajam wa kamaram munira. Blessed be he who created the constellation in the sky and placed therein lamp, siraj, and kamaram munira, and moon giving light, noor. So for, sir for sun, the word is siraj, and for kamar, moon, the word is noor. Also say in Surah Nu, chapter 71, verse number 15 and, 17, 15 and 16. The, don't you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens, seven heavens, one above the other? And then placed therein, made in, in it, Kamar giving Nura. Again, the word is Nur, giving light. Reflected light. Wajala Shamsa Siraja and created the sun Siraj. Torch. Lamp. So Quran very well understands, knows the nature of the light of the moon and lit nature of the light of the sun. Whereas Bible again fails here. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 14 to 19, God says there, let there be light and greater light to govern the day, and lesser light to govern the night. Lesser light to govern the night. Now the original words used for light in Hebrew is ma'or, both for the sun and moon, both. The same word, ma'or. So Bible does not recognize differentiation between the light of the moon and the light of the sun, because the words, original words used here in Hebrew is ma'or, M-A, O R E Ma or. Initially, we were taught in school that the sun is stationary. In my days, it was sun is stationary. In fact, historically, scientifically, in the past, it was understood that the center of the universe is Earth. Geocentrism was the philosophy. Geocentric. The sun is the the Earth is the center of the universe, and it continued from second BC till 1512. When Nicholas Copernicus, he proved to the world that no, Earth is not the center. He pr propounded the theory, heliocentrism, that the sun is the center of the universe. 
even this is not true. Son, if he, but he said, heliofentrism, son is the center of the universe. In 1609, Johannes Kepler, in his Astronomia Nova, he presents a theory, he presents a uh, proof that the celestial bodies, they move in an elliptical orbit, rotating and revolving. Yet, it was understood that sun is stationary. It is fixed in one place. It is lately, lately uh, in the, this century or previous century, they discovered that the sun is not stationary, even it moves. It moves scientifically, we know, 150 miles per second. 150 miles per second. Sun moves with 150 miles, with a speed, 150 miles per second. And it takes 200 million years to take one round of the Milky Way or descent of, of its center. 200 million years it will take. So it moves. Quran mentioned in Furutul Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 33. It is he who has created the night and the day, the sun and the moon. Kullun, every celestial body, kullun, not kula, not to dwell. Kullun, every, each and every celestial body, kullun fi falaki yasbahun, moving, rotating, doing yasbahun, doing sabha. Many translators, they translate, they are swimming, because they, are, they were not able to actually say it, rotating or revolving because they could not understand. But the Arabic word sabaha used here, yasbahun, means that a person, if he walks on the street, he's doing sabaha on the street, it doesn't mean that he's pushed around or he's just standing. It means that he's walking or running, meaning the motion is coming from within the body. If a person is said to do sabaha in water, it would mean swimming. It would not just floating because motion is coming from within the body, he's swimming. If the same word is used, sabaha, for celestial bodies in the space, it would mean rotating and revolving. How is it possible, Quran, to mention 1400 years ago, which it was discovered only 1609 by Jonas Kepler? Just impossible. Alhamdulillah, it, the topic can go on and on for hours, Alhamdulillah. But let me, let me just give you one beautiful example how each and every one can use about how Quran is a miracle in five minutes, inshallah. Just ponder over this verse, chapter 4, verse number 82. It says, Afala yatadabbarun al Qur'ana law kana min indi ghayri la la wajadu fi ikhtilafan kaseera. Do they not consider the Qur'an with care? Had it been from other than God, surely they would, found, they would found therein much discrepancies. It, mean, it means that Qur'an challenges that there is not a single contradiction, not a single error. Right? Now take an example. That suppose one of us have a enough fund and he wants to write a book on ophthalmology. For writing a book of writing a book on eye, he hires the most knowledgeable person, the scientist in the world, and he gets him and he makes him to write a book on ophthalmology and he writes it. Suppose 100 page or 200 page book is written down. I'm asking after the book is complete, how many mistakes you'll find in this book? How many mistakes you'll find? You will say, you can find, but someone say, hardly you'll find a mistake, a knowledgeable person, most knowledgeable person, scientist person, he has written, so hardly you'll find a mistake. Okay, now it is difficult to find mistake, but after 10 years, after 10 years, chances are there because science and technology have increased and you can find on the based of those information some mistakes. After 100 years, chances are more. After 1000 years, chances are bright to find mistakes. Definitely, it becomes definite. Suppose you want to write a book on all different sciences and similar example, you take, you hire every uh, expert or in the field, uh, each and every one, the most knowledgeable person, and you get it right, uh, encyclopedia is written down. The time it, when it is written, hardly you'll find a mistake, but after 10 years, possibility is there, after 100 years, possibility is there, after 1000 years, possibility is there, definite, it becomes definite. Suppose you don't have any fund, you want, you can't hire rich, uh, most knowledgeable person, you hire a professor from a college and you make him write on eye, kidney, zoology, botany, all the sciences, how many mistakes you'll find now when it is complete? You, find, you say that it, you can find mistakes because he's not an all, all knowledgeable, he's a professor. And after 10 years more, after 100 years more, after 1000 years, definitely more. So if you don't have enough fund, you hire a student from a college. And a student makes make him write on different sciences. 
definitely what mistakes you used to find previously, you will find more here when it is written down. After 10 years, definitely more. After 100 years, more. After 1,000 years, more. Suppose you don't have any fund, you can't hire a student. You hire a individual from a jungle who could not read or write. He's unlearned, he's unlettered. He cannot, he cannot spell his name. He has not gone to any school, no university, nothing. And you make him write a book. And if the book, book is complete, encyclopedia is complete. How many mistakes now you will find now? How many mistakes you will find now? You will say, mistake, you will not find a single correct statement. Am I right? You will not find a single correct statement. Full of mistakes, 100% mistakes, you, will find, you say that. Now, 100% mistake, after 10 years, <laughs> can't say, if it is 100%, okay, 102%. There is no possibility, 100% it is a mistake, okay? Now, if this is true with this example, and if you say that Quran is not from God, then it is from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi who was unlettered, who, who could not read and write. We know from history he could not read and write. Time does not permit to give in, the, in that history, but we know as a fact that he could not read and write. Quran testifies that he could not read and write. So if that is an example for an unle unlettered person, that no mistake, no correct statement, here too you should find a similar thing. Not single, not a single correct statement you should find in Quran. Then now, Billah. But here, the opposite is true. That Quran challenges, chapter four, verse eighty-two. A falayat the barul Qurana. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from other than God, surely they would have found there in much discrepancies, challenging. There is not a single contradiction. Though where you you should find hundred percent wrong, hundred percent mistakes. Here it challenges not a single mistake. Is this not a miracle then? Believe me, is it a miracle? It is a miracle. So Quran is a miracle of miracles. If time permit, inshallah, in future, inshallah, I'll elaborate on de in detail, inshallah, about this. With this, I conclude. Wa akhru dawana and alhamdulillah alamin.